Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Abhishek Pitti. I'm uh, founder CEO of uh, Nucleus Vision. Um, we, are, we are the largest ICO out of India early this year. We got listed on Binance. Um, we have all the major crypto funds globally, family offices in India, you know, venture funds uh, before our ICO um, invested in us. Uh, I founded Nucleus Vision four years ago uh, at, uh, in my MBA at Harvard in Boston, and um, uh, we had a good run. I wish we had somebody like Pauls uh, helping us last year. Uh, we learned a lot, uh, but uh, one thing I did learn was um, you get only one shot. Uh, and uh, you know, quite frankly, there is very little time to learn, so using external help I highly recommend. Uh, but this is not what I'm here to talk about. I'm, talk I'm here to talk about uh, before even I get started, let me just get a show of hands. How many people have actually ever been to India? Okay, how many people have actually invested in any company or made any investments in India? Maybe less than even 5%, but here's, that's the point. Um, and frankly, uh, when I said I'm here to talk about uh, you know, India, and you see the title, India, the Emerging Frontier, I promise I'm not being paid by the Indian government to come and talk about India here. <laughs> and it is in our self-interest, uh, quite frankly, uh, quite frankly, for everyone. Everybody who is part of the blockchain community or the coin market cap, if you have invested in ICO, you want to know, you want to know this story. Uh, because this story is about to emerge and the next wave of value creation in the coin market cap will come from these economies. Uh, and I, we believe India is going to be one of the largest uh, contributors uh, going forward. The reason, I mean, just to start with, today India volumes uh, are somewhere around $2.5 billion a day. Could you imagine? I'm pretty sure I didn't hear that number until we did the market research and we came to that number. And these numbers are about to grow dramatically because the GDP per capita is estimated to grow about five times. The retail trading volumes are estimated to grow five times. Our research shows that the crypto trading volumes per day will grow up to at least three times. So if you are an investor, if you are um, an ICO company, if you are um, looking for the trading volumes, I think it would be a mistake to ignore a geography like India. And that's why you know, we are doubling down in our position to, uh, to, to make the opportunity, to take advantage of the opportunity of being in India uh, and operating in India. When I say taking advantage, what I really mean, I mean bringing the retail investors on board. The amount of liquidity in India available is going to be the next generation of value that we will create. Uh, capitalize the resources, and we will go over some of these resources and the investment opportunity uh, in, in the next few slides. And, second, and the last is the scale. We have 1.3 billion people, um, a little more than US. Um, but clearly, you know, anything you implement in India, you can literally go and implement outside. There are the market localizations, but there is definitely a scale that you get when you implement things in India. So in this presentation, I want to talk about only three things, though it looks like a long list, but three things. A few, fact, few facts about India uh, regarding crypto, or how India is well positioned to be the largest uh, community or, and be the largest crypto nation in the coming time, and why is that? Two is some of the challenges that Indian government is trying to solve, and uh, lastly, the opportunity that blockchain brings uh, to India and to the market. So quickly, let's start with what really happened. Everybody, how many people really believe that cryptocurrency is banned in India? Raise of hands. Yeah, so, you know, a lot of the people, currently the general perception is, the, oh, the Indian government just banned the cryptocurrency. That's not really what happened. The Indian government literally said, the finance minister said, oh, Bitcoin is not a legal tender. Everybody knows that. He didn't, he didn't want it to support the illegal financing through Bitcoin. No country wants to do that. But the media turned around and said, oh, Arun Jaitley, who is the finance minister, just killed the Indian cryptocurrency party. I don't know what that meant, but that was the media interpretation. So I think, a lot that has been said by the government and what was interpreted by the media and published by the media kind of went sideways, right? Because now, if you look at Twitter, 
the, if you read the bottom line, it says, the curious reading of the Jaitley's words continued, and the declaration of Bitcoin being illegal and soon to be eliminated is what gets resonated all the time. So a lot of people now just assume that the Bitcoin is banned in India, which is not the case. So let's start with the three things that I want to talk about in facts, right? One is the resources and why India as a country is well positioned to make the best out of this opportunity. So far, what we noticed while we were doing the ICO, a lot of these economies around India were exploding, especially Korea, Japan, China, Russia, you know, all around it. And India has watched this entire so far growth in coin market cap very passively. There were no protocols coming out of India, no major ICOs. We were the largest earlier this year, again. And we, at that point, went and spoke to a bunch of financial, political, industrial, corporate, all leaders in the industry, and basically asked them why, what just happened. And interestingly, none of them really knew what was going on. The speed of evolution of blockchain was so fast that India just didn't catch up. And maybe they were busy, maybe whatever happened, but India never just came out with any major projects. So we said, okay, why? And, and we just explained them what happened and what happened with the growth of coin market cap. And they were like, holy smokes, you know, we need to double down on this and we need to now get behind it. So now, before we go and talk about what we are doing in India, I would love to sort of acknowledge some of the facts that would create a perspective of why India is such an important place uh, in, in, in the next year. So first, from a technical standpoint, my friend Jason King, he talked in his presentation about the lack of skilled labor, uh, and especially being a bottleneck uh, coming forward. In India, there are about 1.5 million engineering graduates that graduate every year. We already have a base of around 2 million technology engineers already. Number two, sorry. The current IT services, PNL, contributes to about $154 billion on an annual basis. It contributes to about 8% uh, of the GDP uh, in India. So you know, if you think about some of the largest companies you might know in the technology services firms, like Wipro, Infosys, Tech Mahindra, um, you know, um, TCS, Tata Consulting Services, these are all based in India. And some of, all of, some of all of the CEOs are now behind what we are doing. So we'll talk about that. So this is going to talk about a little bit about India, why India is a great long-term place to invest uh, or invest in the companies coming out of India, right? So one, India has suddenly spiked because of stable government. It could be multiple causes. But primarily, my belief is because of the new stable government that we have under Modi, um, India has spiked. Um, the ranking of ease for doing business, number one. Two, somehow because of the scale, we are the second largest English-speaking country. You know, we don't have limitations like some of the other uh, neighboring countries that have limitations of language. If you're trying to do business, if you're trying to open, you know, a remote office, development office, what have you, but we don't have that limitation of language. This is an interesting one, right? Because we have 540 million middle-class consumers. You know, um, and interestingly, you will ask, how much money do these people have, right? These middle class people. We'll get to that in a second. The GDP per, ca GDP per capita so far has grown 100%. And it's, again, estimated to grow five times here on forward. So you will see a lot of retail trading growing uh, five times, and then that's where the impact on retail investments uh, in crypto will come. This is one of the biggest um, facts that Bain Capital preaches, that why India would be a leading nation going forward. It's going to be the youngest nation by 2020 with an average age of 29, compared to China or Japan, which are pretty much aging. So these are the ones, uh, the, the next few facts would actually clarify why um, Indian population is so, um, inclined towards becoming great crypto, call it speculators, investors, um, like China and Korea, right? First off, um, this would be, again, a, a, a macro um, 
fact about what the GDP has grown to uh, in the last five years, about 29%. But look at this. This is the most interesting fact. The global gold reserves amounts to around 24,000, 25,000 tons. The Indian household have about 24,000 tons of gold, which is somewhat unaccounted. I would say majority is unaccounted for multiple reasons, right? right one is it's, there is a cultural angle of buying gold on, on festivals. No, number two is people who have cash, they want to save that in, in the form of gold. So when the demonetization happened, a lot of people bought gold. But the fact of the matter is, Indian households have more gold reserves than some of the major economies put together. So there's so much money with this 540 million people that we are talking about, it's close to about $800 billion. And you'll be wondering, why am I even mentioning this? Because of the next few slides, but let's also look at what the investor base looks like in India. We have a retail investor base of about 52 million people. We have HNIs, about 2.5 million people. And institutional, about 5.7. That is the investment base that we're talking about when you talk about India. So that's why it becomes very important for us to know that when we're talking about liquidity, when we're talking about coin market cap, why India is such a huge uh, of importance going forward, and why can, you can't miss it. And this is why. Uh, I the last two slides sort of convene, right? Like Indian government recently have started taking initiatives for tax reforms, uh, for allowing, you know, like frankly, like everybody else, Indian people don't like to pay taxes. Uh, but, you know, the fact is, the, you know, the government has taken initiatives which have actually backfired in some sense. So the consumers in India, I'm sorry, something happened. The consumers in India are hurt and have a negative sentiment around what the government is doing, really. And, and now they're trying to move their cash back into something, something that is more secure, something that nobody can take away. It's not physical. Interestingly, the behavior of the consumer is so digital. If you look at the numbers, they're mind-boggling. There are almost like $793 billion of transactions that are happening in India, close to around 300 million transactions you know, a year. So the Indian population has, the only good thing that came out of demo demonetization that everybody became digital. So now they're digital, they have a lot of capital, cash that they want to move out, and, and guess where it's going to go. So if you look at all the recipe uh, that is required to build a huge crypto base, in my opinion, India had all those characteristics when we looked at it. So what are the challenges that Indian government is really trying to solve, right? One of the biggest challenges is corruption. And if you look, India, India is somewhere about 79 that I see. Yeah, but really, um, it, it, it has one of the biggest problems in India as a country that we are trying to solve is, is corruption. And uh, some of the major areas where the corruption is, is the land registries. You know, I think which is one of the biggest use cases on blockchain. And uh, the other ones would be insurance, housing, uh, health, PDS. PDS, for example, is about $4 billion a year uh, in fraud. So there is a lot of opportunity for blockchain to come in and solve some of these issues for the government. And government is very, very proactive in, in um, adopting some of these technologies and embracing uh, solutions that are out there. Now, as Nucleus Vision, we are trying to now uh, align our agenda with the Indian government um, and India. We are trying to get everybody on the same page. We have all the leaders of the organizations from the top CEOs of the technology services companies, from regulators, from political leaders, from bank CEOs, uh, private and public, to get behind this vision of having the largest ecosystem ever built in the history of blockchain in India, powered by India, supported by the Indian government. So what we are trying to do in India is create, uh, for, first of all, the, one of the largest development centers for blockchain, uh, an ecosystem which will, uh, which will be much larger than some of the peer uh, innovation group, you know, organizations that have ever existed, um, a full blockchain protocol, 
uh, DAP platform, blockchain community, one of the largest again, um, crypto to fiat um, opportunity in terms of exchanges to work directly with the government and organize that, which has been the recent challenge in India. And finally, a media company that can speak to the world on behalf of India versus random post on social media, which people just misinterpret and misunderstand India. So finally, uh, this is the last thing that we are doing with the Indian government. We are organizing the largest blockchain conference on August 3rd, August 4th uh, in Hyderabad, India, which is the technology capital in India. The governments are sponsoring it, co-hosting it. They're coming out um, and you know, sponsoring the event for us. Uh, we'll have a lot of people showing up uh, with the government speaking, the IT ministers of multiple states coming out. So we invite you to please come out, be part of the conference, uh, and sort of witness the facts uh, about India and how India is adopting blockchain. And, you know, I welcome you all personally. Thank you so much.